Hello and welcome to the third episode of Hawk Ridge's 3D Experience Platform Explained series. In this session, we will be examining the project management aspects of the platform and how these can help organizations deliver on-time and on-budget projects. As always, we start in the social collaboration part of the platform, where members can post ideas, comment on posts, ask questions, and generally foster innovation through social collaboration. Here we see an idea. Once the ideation process has been completed, we might transfer this idea to product requirements and build project plans for this idea. We are currently logged into the platform as a project manager. In this case, she has created her own dashboard where she tracks her projects, tasks, deliverables, and issues related to the project. All the required information is available in one simple interface. For instance, in this widget, we see the Gantt chart for a project. This chart is totally editable from within the widget. The data displayed here is real-time updated and reflects the accurate state of the project's progress. Comparisons between baselines and actual project progress can be made at any time. Time. New dependencies between tasks and gates can be defined directly from the interface. Another important widget that we see here is the project dashboard. All the information that the project manager needs is reported here. This reflects the up-to-date state of the project. There is a direct connection between tasks and the state of deliverables. Deliverables are connected to tasks and the state of the deliverables affects the completion state of a task. This is a key differentiator from task-based project management tools that are disconnected from the deliverables, such as Microsoft Project or Primavera. We call this deliverables-based project management. As we see here, budget resources, risks and issues can be tracked and managed. Looking at the project schedule, we can see that the project plan is split into phases, with gates between each phase. Milestones can be added. Deliverables are associated with the task. As we see here, there is a document deliverable that has been provided and is released. The same guard chart that we saw in the widget is also available here. Full editing of the schedule and dependencies is available within this interface. Looking at the phase gate view, we can see that between each phase of the, each of the phases, there are certain activities that can happen. These include a checklist of action items, list of required deliverables, decisions and meetings. All of these are optional. Let's take a look at a different view that are available from the schedule. One of the activities we can do from here is related to resource assignment. Here we can get a view of tasks by clicking the appropriate box. We can easily assign a resource to a task. Obviously, we have the ability to create resource pools and assign users based upon skill set, availability, and department. Another view is the allocation view. In most cases, we don't want to assign a user 100% of their time to a task. Here we can define the amount of time that will be required for them to complete the task. Coming back to the project manager's dashboard, we can immediately see the task she just assigned herself is available in her collaborative task pane. From here, all users can manage state of their ongoing tasks. Tasks included here can be the project tasks or ad hoc tasks that have no relation to a project. Here is she is adding additional reference document to the task. All interactions with the task can be done through simple drag and drop. As we see here, the state of the task is updated and a new document deliverable has been added to the task. This is because we are working on the same data provided through different views. For example, she moves the task to completed by drag and drop. Returning to the schedule, refreshing it, we can see the updated state of the task. Also note that the task is 100% complete. Obviously, these updates are instantly shown on all dashboards related to the project thereby giving the project manager a very clear view on the state and health of the project. Looking back at the dashboard and the Gantt chart widget, we see that this is also updated. In this case, the data is pushed to the widget every time there's an update to the project. Now let's look at a short scenario of creating a new project from the, com from the compass. I jump straight into the project management application. Here we see several projects that the project manager is responsible for. Clicking on programs, we see the two of those projects are associated with the program. The product power view gives us an accurate view of the product development effort as a whole. Let's take a quick look at a project template. A template really encapsulates our corporate IP best practices and process. It can be updated and refined over time and can be used again and again, promoting continuity and standard practice. 
Now we'll create a project from an existing template. We select the template and define some of the attributes of the project. Templates come with a concept called questions. These allow us to build a template that has every possible configuration of phases and tasks, and then filter out the ones we don't require in our project plan based upon the answers to the questions. There is a lot of other standard information that can be used to complete the project plan, such as resource templates, financial information, different calendars that define working hours and days off. Clicking over OK, the new project is created and we are taken to the project dashboard. If we now take a look at the schedule, we can see here that based off the answers to the question, the requirements gathering phase was excluded from our new project. The tasks, dependencies and timings are defined and the project starts from today. All this can be updated as needed. Let's take a look at some resources. Resources for the project have been imported from our resource template. However, we can add resources as needed. We can define their role in the project and even manage their time and assignments. Timesheets can be filled in automatically based off task assignments. As we see here. Let's look back at the schedule. Let's see how we can add in several deliverables for a task. In this case, we're going to take a look at the mechanical design task. Clicking on the deliverables option, we can search for an existing design to add to the task. This is a 3D design that the designer might have to update or create a new revision of. We can add as many deliverables to the task as we need. For instance, here, I'm going to define a new document. In this case, I'm going to make this a placeholder for the assignee to upload an actual file to when the file is ready. In this manner, we can provide placeholders for mandatory deliverables that will get populated at a later date. We now have two deliverables associated with our task. After a quick refresh, we can see this in the schedule as well. Now, Let's assign a couple of users to various tasks. Once this is done, we can move the project into the, read into the ready state. The users assigned to the task will be notified by email that they have pending tasks as those tasks become ready for execution. Coming back to the project manager's dashboard, we can refresh and now see the new project is available on the dashboard. Looking at the collaborative task widget, we see all the tasks that are now owned by the project manager. These could be filtered by tasks that he's assigned to. We can also see that she's assigned to the mechanical design task. Looking at the task, we see the deliverables are available in this view. The task is moved into the in work state and its progress is updated. Now, the project manager is going to add in a new reference document. This could be done with type ahead or drag and drop, as we see here. Looking at the schedule, we can instantly see that the updated state is reflected here as well. Now we'll update one of the deliverables, the requirement document. We can see here that it is a document object with no files attached yet. We can select one or more files to add to the object. Here we add in one document. Looking at the lifecycle of the document, we see that it's in the in-work state. We promote to frozen. However, before we can release the document, we see that a signature is required. This is achieved through a simple route that is added to the lifecycle of this document. We sign off and the document is promoted to the release state. Coming back to our schedule, we can see that the updated state of the document. Now we'll manually move the task to the complete state through our collaborative task interface. We can check on the state of any deliverable directly from this interface. We move the task to complete it through simple drag and drop. The schedule is updated appropriately. With the option to automatically complete a task based upon the state of the deliverables, as well as have the task progress updated automatically, we realize that the project manager no longer has to deal with chasing deliverables and asking people to complete their task. Instead, she can focus on reporting the accurate state of the project to all stakeholders, keeping it on time and on budget. This completes 
the third episode of Hawk Ridge's 3D Experience Platform Explained series. Today, we have taken a high-level look at project management on the platform, including understanding deliverables-based project management and invisible governance.